why is EMG not a good test for neurogenic TOS? Now, this is a test that doctors ordered in the past. And actually, in the 1980s and 1990s, there was a big academic discussion in the literature about why patients with TOS did not have a positive EMG. EMG actually includes nerve conduction velocity as well as EMG. The technical details are not so critical. But the point is that patients get symptoms early on in the compression or stretching of the brachial plexus. They get motor problems where the muscles are weak or atrophied later in the course after the compression or tension has been severe and prolonged. Now, as I said, any other entrapment neuropathy, doctors will try to treat it before you get to that point of motor involvement. And it's no different for TOS. When the patient first gets symptoms, you wanna treat it and stop it there before the motor nerves get involved. Now, nerve conduction velocity doesn't show an abnormality until the disease is advanced. And EMG shows what happens to the muscles. Their electrical activity depends on the nerves that are feeding them. Again, without the technical details, the important thing to know about the EMG test is that insurance companies will still order it, even though every TOS specialist I've worked with knows that the test is useless for ruling in or ruling out TOS. And in addition, even if you had a positive EMG test, it wouldn't tell you where the anatomic abnormality arose. And if a surgeon needs to go in because you have neurogenic TOS, then the surgeon should know what the underlying anatomy is. So EMG positive or negative does not obviate the need for good imaging, which helps the doctor make that clinical diagnosis. Don't be fooled. EMG is not the test to rule in or rule out neurogenic TOS.